Hey guys, it's Ann Yorks from The Flower Box. Today I am going to teach you how to make some amazing Christmas tree cookies. And this tutorial is definitely geared towards the beginner cookie decorator, but I'm going to slip in some extra bonus tips for the pros out there too. So something for everyone today. In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to make a light bulb, two ornaments, a stocking cookie, and three different trees. We're gonna do some stenciling today. I'm gonna to talk a little bit about the basics of piping and flooding and show you some wet on wet techniques. And we'll get a little into how we're doing things and if things don't go right, how to fix them. Plus, this tutorial is also paired up with our tree cookie decorating kit. This kit has the essential cutters and stencils featured in this video, and it also has a boo-boo stick and a sample pack of tipless bags. You can find that on flowerbox.com. All right, we have a lot to cover, so let's cookie it up. Let's start with the light bulb cookie. In this video, I'm using royal icing, and you can find a recipe for the royal icing that I like to use on flowerbox.com. There's a video and a link to a blog post on the homepage. So it's pretty easy to find, check that out. But basically, I'm decorating my cookies with two different icing consistencies. So it's the same recipe, just one is thicker and one is thinner. So I use the thicker icing to outline the cookie and do the details, that's called piping icing. And I'm using this thinner icing, it just has a little bit more water in it, that's what makes it able to flow onto the cookie. And that's what I'm using to flood the cookies to create that really nice flat surface. Now on this light bulb, I've outlined the cookie with tip number two, and I'm going back in and I'm flooding with my tipless bag. I just have that flood icing in an icing bag and I've trimmed off the tip. While those base icings are still wet, I'm using the white flood icing to add the highlights, and it just melts down into the background. Now this light bulb is awesome for holiday parties because it's small, so you get a really high cookie yield. You can make them in all different colors, and the details are pretty easy. Once that icing has a chance to dry for about an hour, that base icing, you can add the filament and also the details on the bottom of the light bulb. That one's a must make for any holiday party. We have our Christmas lights, but our tree now needs some ornaments. I'm gonna show you two different ornaments. The first one is this ball ornament and I'm outlining with tip number two, and I'm getting each section outlined. Oh, now if that ever happens to you, I just didn't touch the line down when I was finished piping the gray icing. So it's not a big deal. I'm just gonna go in with my boo-boo stick and scrape that icing area off. This is a great way to fix mistakes, and then I can just re-pipe that outline. So once my cookie is outlined, I'm gonna add the center section of the ornament. And I'm flooding in the top and the bottom of the ornament. So I have this really pretty sky blue icing that I'm gonna flood in. And then I'm gonna let those sections dry for about an hour in front of the fan. I want that icing to dry because I'm gonna flood some white in the center and I just don't wanna see any color bleeding. So we get the top flooded in with the gray and now we're ready to flood in the base of the white icing. But here's where we're gonna take a look at one of those wet on wet techniques. So while the white is still wet, I'm gonna use the pink flood icing and the green flood icing, and I'm just gonna pipe some lines going across. So this isn't the piping icing, this is the flood icing. It melts down to one surface, and now I can run the tip of my boo-boo stick down and up and down and up. It just creates this really cool pattern. This is very easy to do and it's definitely impressive. So again, I'm gonna let this icing area dry for about an hour in front of the fan. Now I wanna show you how to make this decorative border. I call it a bead border. And it's a series of overlapping teardrops. 
So with my hand pressure, I give a really good squeeze to start the teardrop, and then I ease off the hand pressure as I pull out the tail. And to create this line, I just overlap those teardrops on each other to create this beautiful accent. It looks pretty, and it also cleans up the seam between the icing areas. Now this cookie is almost done. I'm just going to pipe some loops. I'm using a real even hand pressure and letting the icing tip guide those loops onto the cookie surface. But I didn't start out making perfect loops. I've done a million hours in practice sheets. So check out the blog post on flowerbox.com. I've provided a practice sheet for you to practice see your bead borders and your loops just so that you can get confident with those decorations. Okay, so now we have our light bulbs, we have an ornament. Let's jump to the stocking. And you might have noticed I'm using a little bit of a non-traditional color palette on this icing set. And I just love to change it up a little bit so that not every cookie set has just red and green. If you're interested in finding out more about this color palette, check out the blog post on flowerbox.com. I give an icing guide and I also make some suggestions on how much of each color to make. Now on this stocking, I flooded that base icing pink and while that icing is still wet, I go in and add white dots to create that big polka dot pattern. Then we just want to flood in the top part of the stocking, add a couple of piped details, and I'm still using my tip number two. I'm just going to squiggle across and pipe the word joy. But these stockings are super fun for family parties because you can personalize the top of that stocking with somebody's name. So I'm using nice even hand pressure and you can even practice piping words on a piece of parchment before you jump to the cookie just to make sure you have your spacing right. Okay, let's make one more ornament. I love this ornament because it looks so fancy. It's called the finial ornament. And I encourage you as much as possible to give yourself help when you're piping your cookies. So here I'm using a top of a icing bottle to trace that circle onto the cookie with a yellow food safe marker. This definitely isn't cheating, so don't feel like that. And it's something that's really quick and easy to do. It took me less than five minutes to trace a dozen of those circles onto the cookies. It just sets me up for success. Then I'm gonna flood in that red area and add some mini dots. I'm really just using a gentle squeeze as I add the wet on wet dots to that red icing. Now you definitely wanna be careful that you don't dip the tip of your icing bag into the icing. You just wanna let the drop of icing drop onto the surface of the red. Because they're both flood consistencies, that drop will melt into the bottom and that'll keep the dots a really nice round shape as you move across the cookie. Now, sometimes when I'm rushing, I'll get a little bit of drag of icing and the dot just looks weird. Don't panic. Wet on wet icing techniques are super forgiving. You can just cover it up with a little bit of red and then just keep on going with your dots. So I just covered up that mistake and finished off the polka dots on the cookie. Now we're just gonna outline the hanger and we're gonna let that red icing dry for about an hour in front of the fan. Again, this will help deepen that color and it will also prevent icing colors from bleeding if we let them dry before we flood the neighbor. Now this neon green, this is such a fun color. It looks so bright and cheerful against the red. And I just generously flood that circle to get a nice, even border around the edge. I let that icing dry as well. Um, maybe it doesn't need to dry for a full hour because it's a smaller icing space, but because we're piping on top of it with a white icing, we definitely want to have a good crust before we start those details. 
and then I just add this simple piped snowflake. I did want to keep this snowflake delicate, so I sized my tip down to a tip number 1.5 to keep those lines thin. And this cookie's almost done. I'm going to add a pink outline and then a few zigzags on the top, and we have a really cute finial ornament cookie. I love making ornament cookies every holiday season, and I don't always use these fun, bright colors. I also love to use the traditional red and green. So if you're looking for bonus inspiration, check out the blog post for more pictures on flowerbox.com. Okay, so now I'm so excited to show you this Christmas tree with star. I love the size of this cookie. I love the big star at the top. And our first step is just outlining the star. And you notice I did it like you would draw a star, kind of the traditional way, but we're gonna flood over those lines. Then I outline the neon green tree and I flood it in. And I love to be generous with my flood icing, especially if I'm stenciling on the cookie. It gives me a nice, even surface. Then to flood in the star, I just flood over those lines, but the shape will look consistent from cookie to cookie if I pipe that star in that way. So let's start off with the first tree, and we're going to stencil the Christmas tree time stencil on there. But this stencil has a little star at the top, and I wanna cover that up because our cookie cutter has a larger star, and I like that better. So I just use a little piece of press and seal, and I cover up that star, and I just wanna make sure it's underneath the cookie stencil so that it doesn't stick to the cookie. So the sticky side is up. Now I'm ready to stencil the cookie, and I've added red icing to my scraper, and I'm gently scraping that icing as I go across. And that first pass is pretty generous, but then with each additional pass, I'm just concerning myself with making sure that I cover all of the areas of the stencil, and then I wanna remove the excess so that I can reuse the stencil from cookie to cookie. I usually find that I can reuse a stencil 18 to 24 times if I'm careful to remove that excess icing, and that really speeds up my cookie decorating, which is a valuable skill to learn, especially during the holidays. And this is such a cute and quick cookie. So now let me show you how to use this two-piece Christmas lights stencil and I love that it's two piece because you can use two different icing colors instead of just using one. So first we're going to stencil the black lines and before we set down the second stencil you want to allow at least 20 minutes for that icing to dry. You don't want to smush it or have it stick against the stencil. So let the black lines dry for about 20 minutes and then it's time to come back and stencil those lights. Now doing all one color, doing this red color, is the easier way to do it, and we're just gonna clean up around the edges where we saw any icing that oozed. And this looks really pretty and festive, especially since we're using the neon green and red colors. Now before we're done with this cookie, we'll just add a couple of piped accents just to give it a little bit of dimension and clean up those icing areas. So I'm going back in and gently adding some white dots onto the tree that just look like twinkles or ornaments or whatever snow snow on the tree um, but it's just a nice and pretty detail now let's say you want to uh, create your christmas tree with multicolored lights so let me show you that option as well and this time i'm going to airbrush the black lines just to keep that stencil image nice and flat on the cookie so I have the black airbrush color in my Cookie Countess airbrush machine, and I'm just following those lines with the airbrush color going across the cookie. You don't need to spray across the entire cookie when there's just a little bit of that stencil showing. So now we have our black lines onto the cookie, and I'm making sure that the tab from the stencil is in the same spot as the wire stencil was so they were both in the top left so that lines up perfectly 
And now I'm just gonna squeeze a little bit of icing onto my boo-boo stick, and I'm going to use it almost as a mini stencil. And I'm just counting across the lights to try to spread out the colors evenly. Now, I will say this cookie looks really cool when it's finished. However, this is not the most practical way of um, decorating with these stencils. Using this solid one color like I did with the red icing just before is a much easier way to use this stencil set. But if you have a little extra time on your hands and you're looking to make your cookie extra colorful, this technique definitely works and it's a lot of fun. Just make sure you clean your boo-boo stick off in between each pass so that you don't blend your icing colors. I kept a paper towel just right by my workspace so it was really easy to do that. And now I'm ready to lift the lights portion of the stencil and we have a really cute and colorful Christmas tree. And these stenciled cookies are awesome because they just look precise from cookie to cookie. You just get so much consistency in how the finished cookie is going to look, which is awesome. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed learning how to make Christmas tree cookies, ornament cookies, light bulbs and stockings. I had a lot of fun creating this set. If you're interested in checking out the Christmas tree cookie decorating kit, you can find that and details on flowerbox.com. I would love to see what you make after watching this tutorial. So if you try out these cookies, please tag me at the flower box shop that's on instagram and facebook and i just love to connect and see what you're making thanks for watching and happy decorating